Welcome to Toffee TV. It is Mike Three Talking Points, Tottenham Hotspur 4, Everton nil today at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And the Blues, well, well beaten in North London. You know, they not been a great hunting ground for Everton. Tottenham, in general, is a terrible fixture for Everton. That's one win in the last 24 meetings of the two clubs, which is shambolic, really, when you look at it like that. But that's where we are. Comfortably beaten today, um, bottom of the league, no goal scored, seven conceded. It couldn't have gone much worse. I did, when I seen the fixes, I remember having discussions with people when I said that that's quite a tough start and people were telling me it was a good start. Well, I can't wait to see us uh, start to make it a good start by getting points because we need them quickly as possible today. Just nowhere near it, nowhere near good enough. Mistake again. Really poor offensively. Team didn't look together or committed at times, and that's not great. Um, so we need to really rally, you know. And hopefully we've got we've got two home games now, and we need to win both of them. Uh, first talking point today is I'm going to talk about the attack and play, which Everton needs to develop. The manager Steve Stone, Ian Wong are going to have to work on this better. There's got to be other ways of playing other than just hoping to get a corner or a, a free kick. Because that's it. when you're watching it, that's all it is. You're watching Everton smash balls into space. And, you know, I'm you know, watching it. The co-commentators are talking about what's the plan. Like, you know, just kicking it up and hoping Calvert-Loon can get hold of it. It's 2024 and we have to be better. I don't buy... The thing of these players are terrible because people have been saying that and we keep buying new players and people keep saying the same excuses all the time. It, it, it's an excuse. It's an excuse. Look at other clubs where people have gone, these are terrible and new managers gone in and oh, look at how good he's got them playing. There's talent in this Everton squad. Everton could play much better football than what they're playing. Offensively, I'm talking about. And we saw little bits of it in the second half. Now, that might mean the manager has to play Jesper Lindstrom and Illiman and Dye and leave out Jack Harrison and Adelaide Decore or leave out Dwight McNeil and he might have to and I think the time has come where he is going to have to change what he's trying to do because we do have to have yes you've got to make sure that at the other end we're defensive and we're tight Jared Branthwaite will make a big difference coming back in Michael Keane to be fair played quite well today so I'm not just digging him out, saying, oh, Branthwaite will sort it. But Branthwaite is better than Michael Keane. It's just a fact. Better players make your team better. Jared Branthwaite will make Everton better. Dixon did well, you know, considering his debut and all that. So, you know, getting those players fit, the likes of Coleman, Nathan Patterson, you know, and, and maybe Roman Dixon will stay in. But we have got to be more solid defensively. James Garner, when he's fit, will help as well because he can play two or three positions. But offensively, the work has to be done. Lindstrom made a, made a difference on the ball. And Dai looks good, quick feet 1v1, but needs to decision-making's got to be sharper. Got to get a shot away quicker or get a crossing quicker. But at least he shows a threat. He runs the right direction, which is towards the opposition goal. Too many of our players, and Dwight McNeil in particular, run away from their goal back towards ours. Got to turn it and go the other way. McNeil, actually, when he, he dropped in midfield, looked much better, much more comfortable on the ball. Will that work long term? Don't know, but it's an option. I've always I've said it many times. I always think he's, he should be considered sometimes in that number 10 because he can. He can score a goal. He can pick a pass, but we have got other players who can do it as well. So, so I think Sean Dyke needs to look at some different options. I think doing the same thing that we did last year is just not good enough anymore and good teams just snuff that out easily and, and that's certainly what Spurs did today. Uh, second thing I'm going to talk about is Roman Dixon and some young players. Now, it, good that the manager, you know, really pleased with that the manager threw Dixon in today. I am certainly wouldn't be having a goal. Even if Dixon had given all four goals away, I wouldn't be blaming Sean Dykes because he's he's looked what, what Dixon brings and he's used them. And that's good. That's all you can do. Other clubs do it. Other managers bring in kids who make the debut and Dixon come in, he's done well. You know, first 10 minutes, didn't get tight enough, let a couple of crosses in. But after that, thought he acquitted himself really well, put some good tackles in, good recovery tackles. He's got that bit of pace 
the confidence is now can you go the other way with it as well can you play a little one two and get a ball into a box because he does have the recovery pace which is really good but i think i'm glad to see the manager doing it i'm glad to see the manager taking that gamble with a younger player. Hopefully it gives a couple of others a boost. You know, when he brought Harrison Armstrong on for the last few minutes. So other lads who were maybe close or, you know, feeling can see it, can see the path. At least it gives you that, you know, option, you know, that hope that there is a bit of a pathway. But I just think the manager's going to have to use these players because we don't have the biggest squad, you know, and... That's where we are, aren't we? That's really where we are. But I thought he did well, Roman Dixon. I thought he acquitted himself, like I say, really well. And Harris Armstrong looks really confident. You know, came on. He was his making his, you know, going past people like they went there making his Premier League debut. And did well, did well. And hopefully the lad can stay around it. Um, the final point is the transfer window. It's still open. There's six days left. This team is short of pace. We know that. You're looking at, you know, I'm watching... Spurs break. I know they spent. They've invested a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. So it's not like they have picked up these players for a million quid. On the, but you're looking at a team who's got real, real pace. I mean, they play on the halfway line. That's because they're all quick, and especially Mickey Van der Ven's really quick, so they can play that high line. But when they're flying forward, they're a threat because of the pace. Everton couldn't stretch them at all in the first half and they were defending on the halfway line because we just don't have anyone who runs in behind. The couple of times we did sort of get in, the move was slowed down because we don't have that pace. That has to be what is, you know, that's got to be a priority in the next six days. Do I believe it'll happen? No, I don't, sadly. But if Everton can be creative, if Everton can somehow, you know, I don't know, we spoke this week about maybe Farad Mashiri putting a bit more money in. I'm not talking, you know, 50 million because he wouldn't be able to, but there is things as, as direct as loans, there's things that you can put in to keep the business running and just create some cash for down payments. Then Kevin Felwell and his recruitment team, hopefully, have got their list of players they want with pace, can maybe go and put it under because other clubs will be trying to strengthen and that's what we need to do. And, and if we can get two or three out the door, then obviously that loosens it a bit more. And you know, I don't think the Calvert Lewin situation is not helping, but it's not gonna it's not gonna change. Um I don't think anyway, I don't think it's gonna change because it doesn't appear to there doesn't appear to be any sort of indication that it might do, but of course he could sign a new contract at any time. Um, but that uncertainty is not great. But we certainly need something better um, in terms of an attacking, an attacking threat. And if we could get someone in who is quick and can get in behind, that would make a huge difference. I, I get it, it's difficult to do it, certainly at this stage, but there are players out there. In an ideal world, Everton would move three out and bring three in and freshen the whole place up. Doesn't, doesn't seem like that's going to happen, but let's wait and see. But for me, it is a big win. Though. They, do have to, they do have to bring players in this week. To, to pick everybody up. I'm talking about the squad as well. The manager said it on a few occasions. They're stretched. It's a, it's a thin squad. They are stretched. Um, you know, leaving it and just going with what you've got in the hope that it writes itself might be a very risky strategy for us. But listen, they know they know the finances. They know what's there. I just look at it and think, Mopai will go. I feel like I feel like Mason Holgate may well go out. And you can't rule out Abdelai Decore to the Saudi Pro League. And you can't rule out Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Listen, I'm not saying people definitely will come in for Don. But if they did, I think Everton would accept it. So we have to be ready at the other end to flip that. But if Everton, you know, Farad Mashiri could put some money in to the club. Because PSR-wise isn't an issue for Everton. But there's just no cash there. You know, and, and it's how good Kevin Thelwell and... Colin Chong and Sean Dyche and everyone else who makes those decisions is, is uh, good at trying to convince the owner to put some in now as a loan type thing. And when we sell, uh, we pay him back. But listen, that might be that might be no chance of that happening. Maybe I don't know, but I do think they need to invest in the squad this week and the six days to do it. So fingers crossed it happens. Give us a boost. We need something because it's been a really poor start. That is it from me. 
hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. Thank you very much for watching. If you can, enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you later.